I feel like Python and JavaScript are pretty similar languages. And sometimes I'll talk to somebody about that. And one of the things that comes up when they say, well, sure, but, but no, they're pretty fundamentally different, right, is prototypal inheritance. And that's fair, but I want to look versus classical inheritance in Python. And that is fair, but I want to, I think it gets confused, the dynamism of both of these languages. Um, but in general, dynamism gets confused for prototypal inheritance. People will see something very dynamic and say, oh, that's that's only possible because of prototypes or something. And I, I, wanna, I claim prototypal inheritance is not so deep or interesting, um, or rather it's it's not so, the behavior that we get from it isn't so different. Uh, so I wanna look at that in Python and JavaScript. Um, but with that preface, I'm now going to start with Python. And uh, let's, let's see. So Python, we have these things called classes. Let's just play with those a bit. I'm gonna have a class called base, um, simple little class, and I can make other classes. Here's one called child. I'm going to make it inherit from base. And I can make more bases if I want to. Let's have a child with uh, a class called base2. And there's this looking, there's this notion of a chain of these class objects. So first of all, these are objects, right? If I say a equals base, uh, the type of a is, oh, it's a it's a type. That's another word for class in Python. This is, this is an object. I can make arrays of them. Array equals base base, child, right? These are not instances, they're objects, because everything's an object in Python. We'll get to JavaScript where just about everything is an object too, or it makes a little wrapper for it if it's not. Um, these are objects, I'm gonna call them objects. They have to be class objects or type objects. And there's something interesting about these that I can chain them up, I can, I can build webs of them. And in Python, we have multiple inheritance, so they can be more complicated webs, but let's just focus on chains where I can say, or let, let's modify something about base so I can tell the difference. Base has gonna have a attribute called one. Uh, base two can have a attribute called B, that'll be equal to two. And if I look at child, say dot, uh, we're gonna see, oh, there's a A on child and there is no B. Child dot B, nothing there. Uh, but we could change that. We could say child dot bases equals uh, sure. Let's make it base two. Now child, I've I've rewired that thing. Now child dot uh, base is like that is its parent. Now child dot b is something, and child dot a is no longer anything. All right. So I've got these objects. I can wire them up like this, and. I could just program with these things too. In Python, we can make an anonymous class if we want. Um, the syntax is a little annoying. What is it? Uh, a x a equals type of. Uh, you're supposed to use a name. You don't need one. Um, what was next? Uh, this is the tuple of the things you want to inherit from. Let's inherit from child, I guess. Um, and then I'm going to pass the stuff in it. So we'll just use empty for that. And now a dot. Let's put something on child so we can tell the difference. C. And now a. It has a B that it's getting from, where's B coming from? From base two, because that's child's parent. So the, this is emphasizing both, look, there's a new syntax for this. You can you can do this if you want, if you're into expressions instead of um, uh, the other kind of thing, statements. Uh, you could write it like this. But the more important thing is we can wire these things up and make chains of objects that inherit from each other. And that's a lot like JavaScript, where we can also make, I can make something called, have an object called base, and I can have another object called child, another object called base2, and uh, we better put some stuff on those. Let's start over and say ch base can be something with an A in it, and child is pretty empty, and base2 is something with a B in it. I could modify these two, it's just it's less lines to do it like this. Um, and if I want to wire them up, I say object dot set prototype of child to be base. Um, and now if I look at child, it has an A. It doesn't have a B. That's that's the thing it doesn't inherit from. Or I said inherit. Well, forget that word, but it doesn't, it's not in that chain. We call these things properties in JavaScript instead of attributes, but pretty similar. Um, Oh, I'm going to use a different syntax for this. I'm going to say child dot under under proto equals base 
to and now child dot it's the same thing it's just the syntax looks more similar to this basis thing over here now so far we have seen prototypal inheritance because we're creating these objects and then and over here i used the class word but these are just objects and they inherit from each other in this way and this is prototypal inheritance on both sides of the screen but then in python we have this other thing which is that if you want and of course this is what people actually do you can create something called an instance which is outside of it participates sort of in this chain of things but it is in some ways different than one of these classes and that looks like this um let's make i'm going to call it c c equals a child created that c gets does all the inheritance with child including stuff that's directly on child does child have anything yeah c dot c great that was on child c dot b which it's getting from where Mm, I'm having trouble finding it. I think MR, what is it? M, MRO, is that going to give me? Uh, I, I'd have to put it on the class child.mro. Um, gosh, what is it? Whatever. Um, but it's getting, it's going to be getting this B from somewhere else, I guess from base to I think I just don't have completion of it. Uh, yeah, okay, great. So if I look at child, it will show me, yes, the, can I do that on C? Probably not, okay. If I look at child, it tells me what this chain is. It goes up to base two and then up to object. Um, but these things are a little different because they're outside of that chain. They the way that I wire them up is a little different. I have to say class equals, and I can change this too. I can say, you know what, your class is now base. And if I do that, now C dot uh, A is, oh, should be a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. Uh, but C dot, um, what was on child? C dot C is no longer a thing because it's not wired up to the class. So what we've seen here is that the instances are also very dynamic. They are also, they have these runtime dependencies or runtime links in this chain up to their class. And in JavaScript, we don't have that. We have, um, well, it's just as live. It's the same thing. We just don't have this extra thing called an instance. Uh, but the behavior feels very similar. And there are a couple of rules for class. I mean, there, there's many rules, but there are a few rules for an instance in Python for ways that it works a little bit differently than a class. Um, but the dynamism feels like the big difference between these languages and something static, right? Like I could even say TypeScript, but but TypeScript can do some of this. But but obviously something like Java or C plus plus, and which has they have some reflection stuff. But there, a class is not an object in the same way. It is not this dynamic thing you can just wire up. And to me, that feels like the big difference. The prototypal part feels, yeah, it feels small. I guess it feels. Um, insignificant compared to these other pieces. So when I'm trying to tell people Python and JavaScript are pretty similar, this is the kind of thing I'm thinking about. This, I, And they say prototypes, I wanna say, oh, you're, you're missing the point. I'm like, yes, prototypes are a different thing. By prototypes, you may be describing the dynamism of um, prototypes in JavaScript, which Python also has.